before we actually plug in our quad, we're going to go in here and download Clean Flight. And the easiest thing to do is if you don't have Google Chrome already downloaded, go ahead and download and install Google Chrome. You're going to get it from the Chrome app, app Store, so that's probably the easiest way to do it. So we're going to open, open Google Chrome here. And in the very top, we're going to click on the address bar and we're going to type in Clean Flight. And you'll see a few options up here. What we're looking for is the chrome.google. And we're going to click on that. Now this takes us to the app location where we can add this to our Chrome apps. In the upper right, we're going to click Add to Chrome. And then Add again. We're going to give it a few minutes up here in the upper right to get going. Now you see Google Chrome, the App Center here, Clean Flight is actually there. So we can click on it, we can uh, create a shortcut and put it on our desktop, but for now we're just going to go ahead and open Google Chrome. Maximize it to the screen. Now from here we're going to go ahead and plug our USB cable in. All right, when you plug it into the computer, it does fire up the satellite. So if your radio is not on, it's going to start giving that beeping noise that you get when you've gone in the fail state. So to get rid of the beeping noise, we're just going to go ahead and turn the radio on and start into the functions here. All right, in the upper right-hand corner, you're going to see connect. We're going to go ahead and connect. And from here, you're going to look on your very first tab up here to the, to the far left. We're going to have a bunch of tabs here. We're going to start from the top and work our way down, and we're going to work through them pretty quick because some of these are going to be kind of irrelevant, and they've been preset by the factory. So the first tab here, we're just going to make sure that our quad moves in the right direction. We pull up on the quad, front of the quad moves up, we go right with the quad, the quad moves in correspondence to the way we moved quad. Now if it does not, then that means we need to go into another tab, which is the configuration tab, and change the board sensor alignment. Now if you notice this is set for 180 degrees. They changed the board at factory so if you reset this board you're going to need to make sure that you put that 180 degrees back in or the orientation of the board will be wrong. Alright so let's go back up to setup. Other than that here in the setup if you want to put your quad level on the table use some bubble, bubble levels or something like that. You can go up here and calibrate your accelerometer We've already done that, so we're going to skip that step. Now, down here on the Ports tab, this is where we're going to tell the board that we're using a Spectrum-compatible satellite, a DSM-X-compatible satellite. And in the UART2 spot, you just want to make sure that the Serial RX is green. And then before you move on, make sure you hit Save and Reboot. Next, go into the Configuration tab. And once again, like I told you before, we're going to make sure that that has roll at 180 degrees. And we have our RX set to serial. We are using a DSMX compatible satellite, so we're going to set our uh, Spectrum 2048. We're going to roll back to the top here. Some people like motor stop. What motor stop does is, is when you arm the quad, the motors will either spin or not spin. In this particular case, for safety, we chose to turn it off so that when you arm, the motors are not spinning. These are not one-shot 125 capable ESCs that I'm aware of, so we're going to turn one shot off. Um, and then our max throttle, min throttles, is all right here in this position here. So our minimum throttle command that we want coming from our transmitter is going to be 1100. Our max throttle is going to be 1900. And then center stick is going to be 1500. And then we set this here. This is basically the command that the transmitter gives the motors or the flight controller gives the motors once it's armed. So even though we're, we're at 1100 throttle, it's going to start at 1120. Sounds complicated, but you know, just start there. 1120 will be a safe bet to start. Other than that, there's really not a whole lot on the screen we're going to have to mess with here. Um, make sure your LED strip is turned on. Other than that, you're done. Go ahead and hit save and reboot. Now before we move on, I mentioned something in the end about the LED strip. In order for the LEDs to work in the back of the quad and use your turn signals and stuff, that, that option has to be turned on. Alright, the fail safe is set, default by factory. And we're going to go on down to the next, to the PID tuning. Now right here, these are the settings that we flew, we found that worked best on the beginner's level. 
if the quad is not working well with you as far as it's really sluggish, it doesn't turn very fast, uh, you've exceeded the capabilities of the quad, you can come over here to roll rate. And this is like giving expo and, and, and travel. So right now we have our rate set to 50%. If you want to increase it to where the quad reacts quicker, we're going to increase it 60%, 70%. If it's way too fast for you, then we're going to lower it back down. And we found that a 50% roll rate, a 50% pitch rate, and a 60% uh, yaw rate worked really well for beginners. Now we're going to zoom through the PIDs here just to make it quick. Uh, we got our roll P at 2.9, our pitch P at 3.2, and our yaw P at 8.5. Our integral we actually have on our roll at 0 0.020, our pitch is 0 0.020, and our yaw at 0 0.045. Then last, we got to, uh, to our derivative. We have the pitch and roll set to 19, and we do not have any derivative in our yaw save and reboot. Now we're going to move down to our receiver. This is where we're going to set our transmitter up and you're going to need to grab your transmitter in order to make these these settings right. Um, with, with the Spectrum satellite we're down here and we've picked the JR Spectrum Gropner one and what that does is it says that channel 1 is throttle, channel 2 is aileron, channel 3 is elevator, channel 4 is rudder, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, the goal here is, is down in the slider bars, we want to get these all centered the best of our abilities. So in order to do that, we're going to pick up our transmitter here. We're going to click the trackball on the right, and we're going to scroll one option down in the functions list to servo setup. Now we're going to go down to the travel. We're going to click that. We're going to scoot over to subtrim. All right, here in Subtrim, we'll be able to, to make minor adjustments to the center of the stick in order to get rid of, say, this 1501, and we want those to be as close to 1500 as we can possibly get it. So on our pitch, we're going to scroll over to Elevator. We're going to click the ball, and we're going to raise it or lower it to get it to 1500. Once it's at 1500, you're going to click on it. You're going to scroll back up to Subtrim, and you're going to do that to each individual one until you get 1500. So now that all of ours are at 1500, we're going to click on sub trim. We're going to scroll to the left and we're going to go to our travel. Now at this point, earlier in the menu, the configuration, we set everything to 1100. 1500 was our center. Our low is 1100 and our high is 1900. So that's what we have to, to achieve in that menu is a low of 1100 and a high of 1900. So back to our receivers and we're going to move each axis and make sure that A, it goes into to the correct direction, and I am moving right on my aileron stick, and my roll is actually moving left, so we've got to change that. Pitch, move back, the stick should, or the bar should go left, and we moved our rudder to the right, and our rudder actually goes left, and then our throttle up. So we've got to change our roll, and we've got to change our pitch. So in that same menu where we are at in travel, we're going to highlight travel and we're going to scroll over until we get to reverse. In the reverse menu, we're going to scroll over to aileron and we're going to click it, which will reverse. We're going to scroll over to rudder, click it to reverse, and then go back to your screen and check again. To the right is aileron, to the left, back is left on the pitch, forward is right on the pitch, right rudder, the bar goes right, left rudder, bar goes left. So our reverse is correct. We'll go ahead and scroll back up on our transmitter. Click on it on reverse and we'll scroll back over to travel. Now we're back to getting our travel to, you can see there, 1162 to 1838. We need to get this to 1100 and that to 1900. So we're going to highlight aileron, click it. Hold our stick to the right, and as we hold it to the right, we're just going to move that amount until we get close to or near 1900. Move our roller to the stick to the left, and do the same thing until we get to 1100. All right, click, move on to the next one.
All right, elevator. We're going to click on elevator. We're going to pull back on the stick. We're going to scroll until we reach our 1100. Raise it, scroll till we get to our 1900. All right, click, then we'll roll to the rudder, do the same thing. Rudder right. And rudder left. Now, an important part of this, in order for it to arm correctly, we need to make sure that the rudder reaches at least 1900. If it's 1899, it will not arm. If it's uh, 1100 and 1, then it will not disarm. So we need to make sure it reaches at least 1100 and at least 1900. Now the last one we're going to do is our throttle. At low throttle, we're at 1169. And we're going to click on it and roll down until we get to at least 1100. Without 1100, it will not arm. And we're going to raise it and do the same thing. Nineteen hundred. All right, and you see through the process, we have one of them here. The yaw has come off a little bit, so we're going to highlight travel in the same menu. Go back to sub trim. I'm going to highlight rudder. And we're going to fix it. There we go. And that portion is done. We'll move our sticks. Make sure we all of our movement is there. Throttle down. And what you hear in the background is the quad arming on its own. So we know we've done something right here. All right, we're done in this menu. We can go back to the main menu in the, the radio. Now we're going to click the two switches we set up earlier for flight modes. And you'll notice auxiliary one moves. And for our beeper, and it moves. So we're dealing with auxiliary one is our flight mode, and auxiliary two is our beeper. Now, next tab here, we're going to, on the left, we're going to move down the modes. Now, what you'll see here is you'll see this little green arrow move as we go. Okay, so what we want to do is, is I want to put my switch in a position where we want angle mode to be. And we're going to move this. We're just going to drag it over. So when my switch is in that position, angle mode will be active. We're going to hit save. And you'll notice in the upper left here, angle turns green. So when you're not in that mode and that is not lit, the quad operates in rate mode by default. So it will always operate with, without self-leveling until it is in that mode there. Now we're going to do the same thing with the beeper. I'm going to put my switch in a position where I want the beeper off. And as you notice, it's active. So we're going to slide it off here and hit save. Now if I want to activate the beeper, I'm going to put it in the position of the beeper. And as you can hear in the background, the beeper is going. Make sure we hit save before we leave. Now, one last thing, you have your adjustments here. There's a lot of things you can, these, these areas can do. Start to get advanced. We're not going to go through that. Same with servos, GPS. One of the last things we're really going to touch on here, um, you know, you have your transponders. We're going to skip over motors because that's the last thing we're going to touch on. And then your LEDs, you'll notice here we have them preset here so that they act as blinkers as you turn left or right. And then different sensors, tether logging, black box, that all gets very complicated, and that's something you'll learn in the future. To finish up here, we're going to go into the last process. We're going to go back up here to the motors. Now, one thing I like to do before I actually throw this thing up in the air and start flying with it is, is you'll notice that if I change that 1100 and 1900, it will also change it here. So what we need to do is we need to sync these motors and ESC so that it operates in within the 1100-1900 range. So what we're going to do, and this is very important, make sure your props are off because if this process does not happen correctly, the props will spin up and, and it'll bite you. It'll eventually get you. So we're going to make sure the props are off. We're going to disable. I understand the risk. Propellers are removed. Enable motor control. So we've clicked that, and basically we've overridden the safety. We've raised the throttle to full throttle, and at this point we're going to plug a battery in, and it's going to learn the top position and the low position of your ESC signal. All right, now listen for the beeps. Right, make sure all four ESCs have finished their little musical tone. Then we're going to turn off to the side here on the right, and we're going to drop this right back down. All 
All right, ESCs are calibrated, uh, throttle endpoint calibration. Now, before you touch the master control or do anything else, we need to make sure we pull the battery and reset the ESCs before you do anything further. All right, now we're gonna go ahead, just uh, plug them in and see how they react. We're gonna fire the motors up very slowly, and we're gonna check and make sure all the rotation is correct. Barely fired up. Now, motor one, which is this one here, you follow the diagram, it should be turning clockwise, and so should number four. Number three and number two should be turning counterclockwise. You're just going to kind of touch the motors a little bit, and you can kind of tell which way they're going. Now, as long as they're all rolling the right direction, we're going to shut it down. And guess what? We're ready, we're ready to put props on. We're ready to threaten here. We're ready to see what it does. Let's go ahead and button everything up. We'll go back to the table, put the props on, and close everything up. 